In other words, runs would be plentiful. Early on, Omar Vizquel, 545 lifetime batting average against Aaron Seeley. Not this time. Pop up down the third baseline. Saad Zeal with concentration makes the catch even with the fans trying to interfere. So in between, third base ump Gary Sebastian says, don't, don't do that. And then, yea, verily, the rains came. Delayed 33 minutes for a thunderstorm. And then the first pitch after the delay, Manny Ramirez tells Aaron Seeley he's not warm yet. Eighth home run of the season, the Indians take a one to nothing lead. The bottom, of the third. bottom of the third, Dwight Gooden in a jam. Runners on first and second, no outs. Roberto Kelly lines a shot into the right field corner. Manny Ramirez makes a nice running grab. Kelly Dransfeld tags. Ramirez with a strong throw. Doubles off Mark McLemore. Indians 23rd double play of the season. Started by Manny Ramirez. Top of the fourth stride. Still up 1-0 with a runner on. Jim Tome rips the shot down the right field line. Ramirez running hard. He's going to score all the way from first. Jim Tome. Big Jim Tome with a triple. Indians up 2-0, Dave. Blake Gooden pitching bottom of the fifth inning. One thing about the Indian pitchers and the Texans pitchers, they need to get more efficient in their innings. This is one way to do it, a 6-4, three double play. Gooden only threw eight pitches in the fifth. Gooden pitching in the sixth with a runner on. Doc gets Rafael Palmero to grow ground to second. Ivan Rodriguez stops to avoid the double play. Alomar throws to Tomey. Tomey a quick throw to second, another double play. Doc only throws six pitches in the sixth. 14 pitches, two innings. That's being efficient. Yes, it is. Top of the seventh, drive up 4 nothing. Sandy Alomar takes Esteban Loaiz at a dead center, and that's dead and gone. His second of the year, and well, Sandy's happy, but not nearly as happy. There's a mosh pit in center field. The drive up 5 zil. Bottom of the ninth, Rangers trying to make a comeback. Todd Zeal off Mike Jackson, his seventh of the year. It's now just a two-run game. Rangers trail 5-3. Next batter, Mark McLemore at the plate. Routine grounder, but Omar Vizquel, short opposite. Goes under his glove. Omar already with uh, only five errors last season. He's adding to that total now. Rangers bring the tying run to the plate and Kelly, but Kelly, the grounder to Vizquel, and Redemption comes in the form of the putout to end the game. Indians go on to win at the final 5-3. to three. Cleveland now the A's. Jason McDonald, well, he had a big inning. Top of the fourth, Troy O'Leary at the bat. Lines the pitch, and McDonald makes the great catch to save an extra base hit. Same inning now. Mike Stanley at the plate. Nomar Garcia Parr is at first. And Stanley hits one into left center as McDonald can't quite get there. Nomar Garcia Parr coming around, and the relay throw is not in time. The Sox go up 2-0. Next batter is Jason Veritek, keeping with our Jason right, McDonald team. Jason, Jason, which Jason would win the battle, Veritek or McDonald? I'm thinking McDonald won it. Jason says, no, I was supposed to be the winning Jason. Meanwhile, Pedro Martinez being Pedro Martinez, Dave. <laughs> I'll tell you, Pedro can just pitch lights out, gets Matt Stairs to climb the ladder. And that is the inning of Matt Shea to get ahead. Stairs he again. Just a he little went. high cheddar. Eh, tried to, probably figured he was gearing up for the gas, so he dropped the hook on him. So Matty, a grand slam last night, but being a hero in baseball is a very short-lived profession. Against Pedro, it's not very fair either. Bottom of the ninth, Sox leading at 7-2. Mark Guthrie now. Tony Phillips lines the pitch into right center, but Darren Lewis says Jason McDonald's not the only one that can play well. Red Sox second inning, Jim Pitsley facing Scott Brocious with two on, and Pitsley gets Brocious to get it back to the box. But Pitley's throw goes off Randa's glove, and Bernie Williams and Tino Martinez tally as the Yanks go up 2-0 on the fielding miscue. New York now up 7-0 in the seventh. Man on first, Ricky Lede at the plate. Lede goes up the middle. Watch Carlos Beltran throw the third. It goes yeah, just a little offline into the Yankee dugout. Until he can walk home. 8-0 Yankee Royals with three errors, Dave. David Cohen very sharp pitching in his hometown. What's new? David Cohen's been on fire this year. He gets Carlos Beltran with a gas. Mike Sweeney. Probably a splitter. And then he just blows away Jermaine Dye. Cone seven innings pitch, two hits, seven strikeouts. And then in the eighth inning, Yankees brought in Tony Fossus, who was called up when Clemens went on the DL, facing Larry Sutton with the bases loaded. He has on his resume the line base unloader. Grand slam. Tony Fossus, one third inning, four earned runs. He has 108 ERA. That'll probably change. Grand slam, though, not enough as the Yanks hang on to win, bouncing back after that five homer performance they gave. To Shea we go on John Franco Day.
Bottom seven, Mets up two. Bases loaded for Brian McCray against Jerry Spradlin. And McCray, he's had just one home run this year, make it two, but it's his fifth career grand slam for Brian McCray. The powerhouse in center, Mets up eight to two. So the crowd wants McCoy right not, right not to take a curtain call, but, you know, Ricky Henderson, he had the day off, let him go to work, and he takes the uh, curtain call for Brian as the Mets cruise 9-4. to four. You know, the Giants came into this series with the Mets as the best team in the NL, not anymore, as the Mets win their four straight. Talk Terry Francona in the starting spot for Jarek Saturday. Wouldn't be one of his best moves. Facing Raul Mondesi, that's gone. Number nine on the year, Dodgers up 3 up today. Yeah, Darren Dreifer, he's facing the heart of the order. Bottom of the first, one on, man on third. Boy, that's when you learn about a pitcher. And Scott Rowe with a good RBI man gets jam, pops out to Eric Carroll at first base. Next batter, Rico Bronia, and he strikes him out with a breaking ball to get out of the inning. Goes six, three runs, ten hits, struck out five. Galen Sisto. Top two would be a long one for support Jarek. He walks Adrian Belte, and then after a pop out, can't handle the Dreyford sacrifice bunts. Paul Jarek charged with the error, and then he walks Eric Young to load the bases. So, of course, Mark Rizalanek lines the ball into right. That'll score Beltre all the way from third. And then it continues. Gary Sheffield, a little chopper that gets through the left side, scoring Dreyford. It's 5 0 Dodgers. Pitching change. Mike Grace on the mound now. The pitchers have changed. The results have not. Caros. It's a two-run single to left off Grace. It's now 7-0 L.A. Paul Jarek could only watch as the Dodgers sent 10 to the plate and score five in the second inning. Top of the fifth, Dodgers up 8-1. And Dreyford, the pitcher. I want a piece of this. A double off the left field wall as Laduca scores. Just missing his second major league homer as the Dodgers. But he would have the right hat on. Jim Abbott at 0-3 trying to get his first start, though. Dave, it's still amazing how he can feel. Yeah, Abbott, I mean, he transfers that glove over, gets it up, deflects the ball, and then he gets the glove off, goes back to the left hand, makes the play. Offense now, top of the fifth, 2-1 D-backs. Jay Bell facing Abbott and facing him well. In the locked and upright position, over the left field wall, Solo Helma, his eighth of the year. D-backs up 3-1. Bottom nine now, 5-3. D-backs, Greg Olson facing Brian Banks. Banks, a little looper to center, but Jay Bell... Just sort of sticks his glove up. Plays pretty good second for a converted shortstop. Later, Olsen facing Mark Loretta Day. Well, Greg Olson, we know about the problems he's had the first week of the season, three blowing saves, but he's been absolutely terrific since. He has not allowed a run. He has four consecutive saves. He only has allowed three hits. In a Yogi used to remind us it's not over until it's over. And that certainly applies to a game with Griffey's Mariners. 44 homers already this year, eight more than any other team in the AL and well ahead of their record pace set in 97. M's and J's on Saturday. Seattle looking for its fourth straight win. And there's Junior in the first with nobody aboard. Chris Carpenter walks him. Now bottom six, 5-3 Toronto. Griffey on deck. David Bell facing Carpenter with two on. And he's walked to load the bases, setting the stage for Junior. The crowd going nuts. Toronto brings in Thomas Davey to pitch to Griffey. And Griffey nearly takes Davey's head off. Great catch. We look at it again. Junior 0 for 4 left 7 on base in the game. Top of the 8th, 5-3 Toronto. Mark Leiter facing Pat Kelly with the bases loaded. And Kelly rips one to left. A ground rule double. He was 3 for 4 with a pair of doubles. Drove in 4 runs as the Jays win it by the final of 9-3. Chris Carpenter improves to 3-1, and one, winning his third straight this season. White Sox and Angels. Holly Hunter throughout the first pitch. And did it quite well, I might add. Bottom of the third, 1-0 Angels. Randy Velarde, solo homer off James Baldwin, his second of the year. It's 2-0 Anaheim. Bottom five, they're up 5-2. Charlie O'Brien, the smash to third. Greg Norton, nice play, and then fires on to first for a very nice double play. Top of the ninth now, 5-5 Angels. Runners on first and third. Troy Percival in there facing Ray Durham. And Durham takes him deep. His sixth homer of the year, four RBI in the game. Sox up 8-5. And they win it by that very same count. Percival had allowed three hits in one run in his first nine games. Saturday gave up five runs and five hits in two-thirds of an inning. David Lundquist earns his first career win. From Wrigley and Tappany, pitch like he was never injured. Top of the third against Matt Clement. Tappany records one of his four strikeouts. 
He was perfect through four and a third. Bottom four, one nothing Cubs. Two on for Benito Santiago. Double steal on. Greg Myers throw. Gets past Dave Magadan. Henry Rodriguez. Oh, Henry coming in to score. Two nothing Chicago. Bruce Bochy. Not good. Top nine, two on Chicago. Jim Riggleman goes with Felix Heredia and not his normal closer, Rod Beck. Heredia in the game. Two outs and one on for John Vanderwall. And Heredia gets Vanderwall to fly out to center as Lance Johnson pulls it in. Heredia gets his first save of the season. And Chicago now has won four games in a row. The final score today, two to one. Tappany went seven innings, giving up three hits and one run. And Giles had a huge afternoon. Bottom of the sixth, he's at the plate. And there it goes. Giles in the game, three for four. That's his seventh home run of the year. He has the Pirates' last five home runs. And then, not really known for spectacular defense, with a spectacular play. Vinny Castillo, the batter. Giles with a diving grab. Top nine. Mike Lansing's at the plate. Two runners on to Giles again. Can he do it again? Efforting, efforting, efforting. Another great effort. Giles drove in three runs. He went three for four. Great D as well. Pirates win at 9-3. Giles says about his new home, I just wanted a chance to play. ...who's had some problems on the mound. Does what he's supposed to do. Induces the pop-up. Three Orioles come in near the mound and do what they're not supposed to do. Let it drop. Coomer actually legs out a double and would later score on a Terry Steinbeck single. Three inning, two nothing twins. Coomer up again. Coomer out again. Takes Coppinger deep to right, his second of the year. Ron Coomer, four for four. Dave, the Orioles have fundamental problems. Well, 5-2 two twins, two on for Jeff Conine, who's only hitting 130. That looks to me like a sacrifice bunt. I don't know if Ray Miller called it or not, but they were down by three. I know one thing, Earl Weaver never bunted. <laughs> As for Brad Radke, he did the rest. Delano De Shields, go away. Two outs. Next batter, Willis Atanez, go away. Radke works out of the jam. Complete game scattering, eight hits, and then in the ninth, Here's your lone Oriole highlight, and it's on the funny ha-ha side. Rich Emerald strikes out. There goes the bat. That's the best catch the Orioles made all day. It was the only excitement for the mascot. Insert punchline there. The Twins will beat the O's 7-2. to In trouble with a man on. Facing Mike DeFelice, normally known for his defense. DeFelice singles to right. On the play, Paul Sorrento to second. And Sean Runyon begins to warm up in the pen for the Tigers. Meanwhile, Larry Barnett goes out to talk to Moeller and watch the spot shadow. Barnett points to his thumb to tell D-Ray's manager, or Tigers manager, Larry Parrish, he thinks Moeller has something on his thumb. Turns out to be sandpaper on Moeller's left thumb. So Parrish comes out to talk to Barnett. Moeller and the umps confer. The umpires inspect Moeller's glove. They don't find anything, so they give it back to him. And then Parrish gets a final explanation of why Moeller was ejected. Notice Parrish doesn't put much of a fight as Sean Runyon comes in to pitch as Moeller makes his way to the dugout ejected. Dave, what's going on? Well, this going all the way back to the third inning. The Devil Rays started noticing some things. Fred McGriff fouls off the fastball. Moeller gets a new ball, starts to wiggle off his glove. We're not going to see it right here, but we will later. But we're not seeing what he might be up to, but watch this pitch from the drift. That had a little magic action on it. You notice Brad Osmus, the catcher, walks off the field with the ball. He's not going to show it to anybody. Now, later on, you can see him rubbing with both hands, but that left thumb is rubbing on there. There's no doubt about that. Let's see what the next pitch looks like to Paul Sorrento. That looks like a little cutter down and in. Sorrento asked Barnett to check out the ball. He leaves it in, believe it or not. So, <laughs> the intrigue goes on. A little movement on this one outside corner strike two. Look at the duck tail on that one. Sorrento didn't even close. Osmus again looks the ball over and says, I think I'll take this to the deck out. It may not necessarily mean anything, but Moeller was ejected from the game. For some reason, he was allowed to stay in the dugout, though I'm not sure why. So he saw this. Bottom of the seventh, his replacement, Sean running in with the bases loaded, and Randy Wynn just got under it. And Carstione makes the catch. Quentin McCracken tags up and scores, and the Devil Rays go on to win this one, the final 4-3, to three, but that really the subplot. Springer. It took about an hour for the ball to get to the plate in 10 seconds for it to leave the yard. Hammers the knuckler out. Second straight game, he's homered, 34 8 of the season. Top of the second, Stroh's down 2-1. Bijou up with two on and two out. Line drive at Kevin Ori, but Ori drops it. Everyone's safe on the air. Ori's fourth in three games, and that would start a Stroh's rally. Derek Bell capitalizing. Singles to score two. 
Ken Caminiti singles up the middle, 5-2 Strohs, and then Carl Everett back up the box, scoring Bagwell, 6-2 Strohs, Dave all five runs in the game unearned. Yeah, Jose Lehman didn't pitch a great game tonight, but he did bear down when he needed to. Cliff Floyd up. He's the most dangerous hitter in that lineup. He strikes out, and then he gets Derek Lee to end the inning. Two good fastballs from Lehman. But Astros manager Larry Durker went to the pen in the bottom of the seventh. In comes the flamethrower, Scott Ellerton. Marcotte saying no, sir. One and two-third innings of perfect relief. Then bottom of the ninth, two on and two out for Billy Wagner facing Mark Kotze. Kotze lines a shot that Caminiti smothers, but drops it, forces it to end the game, and Caminiti was a little hurt. He would recover. We all wish him things no one thought he could do. His eighth home run of the year. He had three RBIs in the game. That was a two-run shot. Cards up three-zip. Cards up 3-1 on the top of the third, Sean Dunstan. Triples to right. Dunstan also drove in three runs in the game. Two runs coming in to score here. And St. Louis is up by the count of 5-1. Then Dunstan on defense. Michael Barrett, highly touted Montreal rookie. The hard grounder, Dunstan. Great diving play. Is he too old to play shortstop? Not by the looks of that. And the cards blow out the Expos 16-5. J.D. Drew tied a St. Louis record with five runs.